Well, space law is an emerging uh, area of the law that's gained greater prominence in the past few years, and that's largely due to the accelerating commercialization of outer space. Uh, space law is not a new area. Uh, it's been around for some 60 years. The original international treaties in the law of outer space were written in the 60s and the 70s. But those governed governmental activity primarily. Uh, but in recent years, commercial entities, companies, have been uh, gaining a greater foothold in space. Uh, and so space law now uh, governs not only governmental activities, uh, but also the uh, activities of these new commercial entities. Private activity in space is a rapidly growing area which is causing a major shift in how outer space is viewed. Well, the development of uh, human activity in space has been rapidly evolving. We saw last year the successful delivery of cargo to the International Space Station by a private company. This was the first time that this was done. We have multiple companies also developing uh, first suborbital human spaceflight led by uh, Virgin Galactic, uh, but there are a handful of other companies that within the next two or three years uh, will be sending passengers on a regular basis into suborbital space. The step after that will be point-to-point -point travel, so that you take off from Los Angeles and land in Tokyo within an hour or so. As this area of space development continues to evolve, governments will have to react and adopt laws and regulations for this area. As the human activity in space grows and changes and evolves in, into new areas, uh, the law will have to react. Most recently, we had these new regulations in human spaceflight that were promulgated by the FAA uh, to govern this new industry of suborbital space tourism. And so there had to be some uh, regulations online that dealt with the training of the crew, for example, or the uh, informed consent of spaceflight participants, the passengers. Perhaps a little further into the future, uh, although moving at a, at a good pace, are companies that are exploring asteroid mining because there are a number of near-Earth asteroids that contain trillions of dollars of valuable metals and other materials. And there are companies that have been organized by very serious people um, who are planning to prospect and mine these materials. And that raises some very interesting issues of international law. These new fields only further enhance the wide range of opportunities for those looking to work in an area of law in the space industry. Well, space law embraces a great variety of different issues, and the job opportunities can be found uh, both in governmental organizations. You could work for uh, governmental organizations, uh, agencies within the U.S. government. You could work for uh, nonprofit organizations that, for example, set uh, best standards and best practices for companies that are active in space and governments that are active in space. Uh, and so uh, you could also uh, work for any number of uh, companies that manufacture space assets, for example, manufacture satellites or launch vehicles or any of the many components uh, that are integrated into these launch vehicles and satellites. And so there's a, a great deal of uh, uh, opportunity to find employment uh, in the law of outer space. And that's exactly what we're trying to prepare our students for because suddenly there are far more opportunities than there had been in the past and we want to make sure that our students uh, are trained in the field of space law so that they can take advantage of these opportunities. To stay at the forefront of this growing field, Cleveland Marshall offers a course in space law which applies global law topics to this emerging area. The students that study space law here at CM Law will have the opportunity to gain an overview of all of the different areas uh, that are involved in space law from international law to domestic regulation to public policy issues such as the, the military use of outer space and we have an opportunity to explore uh, various types of law and really the multi-dimensional nature of complex areas of the law. And in that respect, the study of space law provides students with skills that are transferable. It seems like a very exotic, esoteric area of the law, and many students uh, might think that it doesn't have a practical application to their future career as lawyers. Uh, but that's not the case. Uh, there are a number of transferable skills because in the course of the class, uh, students have the opportunity to learn how to read treaties and interpret international treaties and also navigate complex domestic regulations, in this case promulgated by the FAA, uh, but the ability to read, interpret, and apply those regulations um, can serve a student well regardless of what field they go into. The space law course is taught by Professor Sundahl,
who is one of the foremost experts in the country on the subject. My first work in the field of space law was done while I was a student in San Francisco and I wrote an article on liability for damage caused by unidentified orbital debris. And then I got more involved in, this, in the space uh, in the field of space law when a new treaty on the finance of satellites and other space assets was being developed. And I worked on the drafting of that treaty. And uh, that gained me entree into the broader field of space law. Uh, and I had the opportunity to join the International Institute of Space Law, uh, where the leaders of, in the field of space law uh, gather uh, to discuss uh, current issues in the field. Uh, and then was more recently appointed by the Secretary of Transportation to the FAA's Commercial Space Transportation Advisory Committee to assist the FAA in developing new regulations governing private activity in space.